Hello and welcome to this tutorial on calculating pi, this time using the BBP formula. In this video I will show the BBP pi formula, I will rearrange it for use with fixed point values, and I will give an 8-bit demonstration as well as showing some example code. Prerequisite knowledge required for this video are that you know what a fixed point number is, know how to add and subtract fixed point numbers, how to divide binary numbers, and how to right shift binary numbers. It would also help if you knew what Leibniz pi is, which I discussed in my previous video. So this here is the BBP pi formula. As you can see, it is much more complex than the Leibniz formula. So then, how would a simple CPU calculate this? What we want is a fixed point value for pi. So on an 8-bit CPU, we want pi multiplied by 2 to the power of 6. This roughly equals 201. And if you take 201 and divide it by 2 to the power of 6, you get 3.140625, which is pretty close to pi, as opposed to pi equals 3, which is what you would get if you just represented it as an integer. So now we need to rearrange the BPP pi formula, and we first multiply by 2 to the power of 6, which gives us the equation below. What I have done is I have multiplied the numerators of all four of the inner fractions by 2 to the power of 6. Now, to further simplify the equation, we can substitute in h, where h equals 8k. This gives us the equation below. Now, the final thing to do with the BPP pi formula is to replace the division by powers of 2 with right shift. This gives us the equation below. Now, to evaluate this formula, we first calculate the inner four fractions, then we add and subtract them as appropriate, then finally we right shift the result and add that to the answer. So if we start with h equal to 0, this gives us the fractions 256 divided by 1 minus 128 divided by 4 minus 64 divided by 5 minus 64 divided by 6. Then that gives us 256 minus 32 minus 12 minus 10, which equals 202. Then we right shift that h divided by 2 times, which is 202 right shifted 0 times, to give us 202. Then we add it to our current value for the answer. The answer starts out as 0, so 0 plus 202 equals 202. Now we have h equal to 8. Remember that h increases by 8 each iteration. This gives us the fractions 256 divided by 9 minus 128 divided by 12 minus 64 divided by 13 minus 64 divided by 14. That then gives us 28 minus 10 minus 4 minus 4, which equals 10. We then right shift this h divided by 2 times, so we right shift the 10 four times and this gives us 0. So the answer is then 202 plus the 0 which gives us 202. There is no point in continuing further and doing more iterations as the value is right shifted so that it always equals 0 for 8 bit. If we did more than 8 bit then this could require more iterations to give the answer. How then would this look in code? So this program here is a high-level B code implementation of the algorithm we just went through. We first start by setting answer equal to 0, then we set a variable called h plus 1, which represents h plus 1, equal to 1, then we set another variable called h divided by 2, which as the name implies represents h divided by 2, and we set that to 0. We then create but do not set variables for each of the four fractions as well as the temporary variable. Then we have a while true loop, so this loop will carry on forever. Then we first calculate the first fraction, which is 256 divided by h plus 1. Then we calculate the second fraction, which is 128 divided by h plus 1 plus 3. Then we work out the third fraction, which is 64 divided by h plus 1 plus 4. Then finally we work out the fourth fraction, which is 64 divided by h plus 1 plus 5. Then what we do is we take fraction 1 and subtract fraction 2, then fraction 3, then fraction 4, 
and put the result into temporary. Then we add to answer temporary right shifted h divided by 2 times. Finally, we add 8 to h plus 1, then we add 4 to h divided by 2. And this here is a relatively low level URCL version of the program. We first start by setting register 1 to 0, which is the answer, then register 2 equal to 1, which is h plus 1, then register 3 to 0, which is h divided by 2. Then in the while loop, we divide 256 by register 2, which is h plus 1, and put the results into h register 4, which is the fraction 1. Then we add 3 to register 2, which is h plus 1, and put the result into register 5 which is for fraction 2. Then we do 128 divided by register 5 which is register, uh, fraction 2 and put that into register 5 which is fraction 2. Then we add 4 to register 2 which is h plus 1 and put the result into register 6 which is the third fraction. Then we do 64 divided by register 6 which is the fra third fraction and put the result into the third fraction. Then we add 5 to register 2 which is h plus 1 and then put the result into register 7 which is the fourth fraction then we do 64 divided by register 7 which is the fourth fraction and put the result into the fourth fraction then we subtract register 5 from register 4 so we subtract register uh, fraction 2 from fraction 1 and put the result into temporary then we subtract register 6 from temporary then we subtract register 7 from temporary so now temporary equals the result of all the fractions then we right shift register 8 register 3 times where register 3 is h divided by 2 then we add register 8 which is the temporary variable to register 1 which is the answer and finally we add 8 to register 2 which is h plus 1 then we add 4 to register 3 which is h divided by 2 and right at the end we jump back to the beginning of the while loop that is everything I wanted to cover. If you've made it this far into the video, please comment bananas so then I can tell who has actually watched this video. And with that, thanks so much for watching and cheerio.